Hello Internet, my name is Nathan. Uh, today we're going to be going through the unboxing of the PC parts that I picked out. Uh, this is a complete PC. Um, it's everything from the case uh, to a keyboard and monitor. The only thing that is not included if you were to start from scratch is a mouse. I already have a mouse, so I didn't buy one of those. But there's a lot of cool stuff here. This is what I would consider more of a budget PC. Uh, it's certainly nothing that intense, no dual um, graphics card, no Crossfire SLI or anything like that. Uh, this is an AMD build and the reason for that is just cost alone, um, plus some of the other factors that we'll get into during the unboxing. So these are all the parts. We're going to go ahead and start with the case and then move on. So let's uh, start it right up. So this is the Cooler Master Elite 311. It's a huge is going to be our weapon of choice today. It is a letter opener that I got a long time ago. That's awesome because it's a sword. Uh, this is the Cooler Master Elite 311. It was about fifty dollars. Um, most of my parts I got from Newegg, uh, and that was just because free shipping and they just had good prices. The only part that was not from Newegg was from Amazon, and that was the power supply. Um, I was, I was donated a power supply by a friend, Gerald Rowe, so thank you for that. But um, I didn't use it because I figured if I'm going to start from scratch, I might as well start from scratch. So uh, let's dump this out here. This is the uh, black and blue edition, and that means is this ring is going to be blue. Something that's not right about this case in the picture is that it will have a window here. It kind of scared me. I hope it has a window, actually. I'm not sure, but it should. Okay. Owner's manual for your case. Some of the uh, positives about this case is that it's cheap. Um, just under 50 bucks. Uh, it's a mid tower. Some of the downsides are that the, the back panels are actually ones you have to knock out and you cannot replace them if you decide to change your system. So any changes you make are going to be permanent. So you have to think ahead and uh, it's just part of being a cheap case, which is fine for me because I don't see myself having to upgrade in the immediate future. Okay, good. So we have a window. Here's the, uh, the blue trim I was talking about. The reason why I went with blue is because I have some blue cooling fans that uh, Gerald also gave me. I will use those because they're just fans. Uh, two USB 2's in the front, headphone and microphone jack, power reset. Um, this is a little bit easy to hit, but that's okay. Um, on the back, you have standard I.O. Um, and then these are the PCI Express slots. Um, I'll go ahead and open up the case and show you what I mean by the they are non knockoutable or non replaceable. Um, so some of the reviews said that this plastic on the side will come apart due to these rivet rivets rivet rivet. Um, right now it doesn't seem to be an issue. We'll see how it goes. That's the inside of the case. So, looks like there's no scratches or anything like that. That's good. Uh, plenty of hard drive space there. I did get a, uh, oh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise of what we got. It's sort of the mystery of the unboxing. Got some zip ties, some screws and the uh, motherboard speaker. 120 millimeter fan in the back, it's a Cooler Master fan. And then in the front we have our USB headers and your reset hard drive light and uh, power light, those kind of things. So overall, it's a pretty good case. Uh, I think it seems like it's High quality. What I will be changing about this is that I'll be painting the inside black and that'll be in a different video. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like a nice case. Um, the knockouts, what I mean by that is if you 
look up close here, the there's no screws to take out these individual slots, so when you remove one, you actually have to break the metal along the seam, meaning that you can't replace them easily. I've thought about it, maybe you could epoxy back in place, but if uh, I'm going to try to not have to do that. I'm going to try to be careful when installing everything, and that is that. So, just some thumb screws in the back, and it will be back together, unless I can't get my kids back together. So I, I guess I should mention that this is the first PC I'm going to ever have built from scratch. I've had a lot of PCs in the past, and I'm actually currently more of a Mac person, but for the money right now, this is just uh, the most powerful thing I can get. So there's the case, looks nice, um, I guess we'll just open this side and see how spacious the cable routing is. Mm. So I don't really have a feeling for how much space is actually uh, available here uh, as far as cable management, but um, I've worked on cars for a long time, running wires in places they shouldn't be, so hopefully it won't be an issue. I'm going to try to make it as clean as possible because that kind of stuff bugs me. Easy to take apart. Easy to put together. So that's good. Um, this is a bottom mounted PSU, uh, which is an advantage in some, some uh, areas. One of the other things I forgot to mention is that the cable management does not have any grommets, which is a problem if you expect to move the wires a lot. What can happen is the wires will rub against the metal part and could short the wires out, so that's not very good. But again, we're going to be try, trying to be careful. Cable management should help against that, um, fusing zip ties to keep the cables from not moving and, and wearing away the shielding. Uh, I guess we will go to the monitor next. This is sort of a budget monitor as well. It's a full 1080p uh, LED monitor from Acer. Uh, the reviews on this have been pretty good. Uh, I haven't actually seen a negative one. I did get a slight discount on this one. I believe it's like $20 off the retail price. Uh, so let's see. Off to a good start. All right. Well, there's the stand. Uh, glad that's not something that can be really broken. This looks like the some sort of, oh, this is the pivot mechanism for the back of the screen. Uh, AC brick, some um, instructions and a, I guess it's a drivers for your monitor. I'm not really sure about that one. Kind of new to this stuff, new to building. So uh, this is just part one. Part two will will be me actually stumbling through building this, which hopefully will be interesting and painless for everybody. Yeah. Only a few more things fall out. So I'm not sure if, if it's my unboxing skills or if it's the packaging, but just for the novice, this is kind of nerve wracking having all your stuff fall out. So it looks like we've got, is there a VGA, VGA, and those really dual two VGAs? No, I think this one is a DVI. Yeah, this, this is a DVI DVI. This one accepts both VGA and DVI. There's no HDMI ports. This thing is really light. Maybe like a couple pounds is what it feels like to me. Um, pretty nice uh, real estate here, 21 and a half inches, corner to corner. Um, as you can see, it's just really thin nice uh, screen so you can push it up against the wall or the back of your desk. Like I said, DVI and VGA and the just uh, DC power in. So this is the bracket that would go up into there and that would make it pan and tilt. So hopefully this is a nice monitor. It seems like it's really quality. I'm really excited to see all of the uh, games and graphics on here. Hopefully it'll be worth the money. And then some, alright, let's 
so. Next, we will be unboxing the power supply. So this is the only Amazon product I have. This is a thermal take power supply. I believe it's a TR600. It is not the new P version or the TR2 version. So I could not find hardly any reviews. I think there were six on the Amazon website and I couldn't find any video reviews of the product. Or, uh, and it's not even offered on Newegg. Uh, the reason why I got this one is because it was cheap and uh, had what I needed. So, no frills packaging box and some poppables. So, oh, this is the TR2. I lied to you. But that's awesome because it's better power supply. So it's 600 watt power supply. Now I like have no credibility of, of what this thing actually does because I don't know anything about it. So yeah, it's a power supply. Let's see what's in it. Um, the calculation I did on the system shows that it will only need about 500 watts of power. So I figure 100 for overhead uh, will be enough. I would probably have to upgrade this if I got a faster processor, but hopefully I won't need to do that for a while. Standard power cord, some uh, some things in 100 languages. Thermal take. Cool your life. <laughs> nice. Okay. This is not a modular power supply, so you're definitely going to have to do some cable management with it. Nice matte black, which should match the matte black for the case. Warning, select proper AC voltage. It's talking about this switch here, so it's made for both US and European current. Let's see, the, the review said that there is plenty of cord length, which is a, a blessing and a curse at the same time because if you don't need all that cable length, then it's more to hide. So, looks like we've got our standard 24 pin, and I'm gonna act like I know what I'm talking about. I believe these are for hard drives, and uh, more hard drives, uh, Molexes for fans, and um, other things like that. We have a 6 plus 2 and a 6, so this would be for. Um, higher end graphics card that needs uh, 12 total pins or SLI or Crossfire cards that you would use six in each. I don't know what the two is for. I don't think I'll need it, but it's there if I ever see an upgrade. Here's an eight pin. There's the supplementary CPU power. So it looks like everything I need is here. Um, if these are all indeed hard drives, then I'm gonna have a lot of cable hiding to do. So, thermal take TR2 600 watt power supply. Hopefully, it has enough power to power my system. I won't even know how to tell if it doesn't. I guess it probably won't turn on or something, or it will just die during the intense loading. But hopefully, it doesn't do that. All right. Moving right along, probably for what everybody wants to see. This is all of the main internal components, minus the PSU, of course. This is all from Newegg. Newegg totaled $951 with the remaining being the power supply. Um, I think I mentioned it, but it costs about $1,010 to actually order all the parts for this computer. So I guess we'll start first with uh, the graphics card. This is a Radeon HD 6850. It's got one gig of uh, memory inside. Uh, Ifinity, which is nice, it has dual HDMI out and a H, sorry, dual DVI out with one HDMI and one display port. So it should be a nice card for what I need. I'm more of just a Star StarCraft player, uh, which is available for Mac, but my Mac has become so old that it just can't keep up with the new software. So that's one of my major reasons for 
buying this, all these components. This graphics card did come with a free Dirt 3 copy. Here's some drivers. You definitely don't want to use those. Download them from the website, the latest ones from the website. Quick install guide. This looks like a uh, something important that I don't need. Stop. This is your graphics card. Uh, this is your Crossfire Bridge. I don't need that yet because this is going to be a single graphics card build. Um, Molex to 6 pin. I don't think I'll need that either. And a DVI to VGA adapter, which again I will not need. I have a lot of spare parts. So now let's get to the star of the show here, which is the Sapphire 6850. Nice card, pretty finish. Um, it's an AMD card, obviously, and should uh, be everything I need to run the sort of basic games that I play. Uh, I don't know what to say about it except it's blue and matches my theme. Looks like it's got plenty of cooling. I'm going to say that it has high quality Japanese capacitors because I don't know any different. And the dual DVI, HDMI, and display port out. So, pretty nice card. Um, probably holding it wrong or something. I'm sure I'm going to get lit up in the comments, but you know, it's my first time building it. Hopefully, it works. If not, it's just dead on arrival, right? Okay, put that back in the bag. Put it to the side. Running out of space on this couch. First world problems. Okay, what is this? I don't even know what this is, so we're gonna go ahead and open that up next. I can't find a seal. There's a seal. All right. So this is. Oh, okay. This is my RAM. It's uh, 8 gigs of uh, Kingston HyperX RAM. It was cheap. It was, uh, you know, available right there. Kingston's probably the leader in memory right now, so I trust them. And uh, 1600 megahertz RAM, I believe. Uh, yes, and it's DDR3. I'm thinking about doing a RAM disk, and if you don't know what that is, it's really cool, and you should go look. Um, I don't know if this is from the RAM, but I think I have another copy of Dirt 3 that I will give away if I have two copies. So I'll have something at the end, if uh, some sort of thing you can put in the comments, and I'll pick one of the comments and give a Dirt 3 code. Uh, Blacklight Retribution, I guess that's a game. Not something I'm really interested in. Tune-up utilities, again, not something I'm interested in. But there's the RAM for the system. Next we will go to... What do we got in here? We'll go to... Okay. We'll go to this. This is the uh, hard drive I've chosen. I only have one hard drive. Um, also, there's a surprise at the end of this video. or, or it's, it's not a surprise necessarily, but it's a, it's a unique uh, thing to this computer. Just uh, my sort of outlook on the future of computers uh, for the choice I've made here. So this is an ADAT 150 gigabit or gigabyte solid state drive. Um, it's got pretty good reviews on, I think it's Passmark. Uh, it was cheap, $109 for 120 gigabytes, which is actually really good dollar per giga, gigabyte uh, ratio. So that's nice. Uh, again, budget PC. Here is the SSD mounting bracket. We'll go in the case, uh, coincidentally blue, which is nice for me again. Getting really lucky on this color scheme thing here. So, uh, my operating system and all of my programs for now will be going on this. I don't have a secondary hard drive, which is sort of the unusualness of this computer for today's standards, is to only have 120 and I'll be on an SSD. Hopefully it's reliable, I don't have to recover anything and start over from scratch. So yeah, there's my hard drive. Moving right along, uh, let's do this one. This is uh, one of the um, things that I will place, put in place of the five and a quarter inch bays in the case. It's a card reader. It's probably one of the cheapest ones out there. It's the Media PC Model ZEC68 card readers. So, 
Looks nice here. It's uh, no frills. One of the things that I was looking for in this card reader is the, the light that's on the card reader is not on all the time, which is really nice because you don't want a big red light in your face all the time. Um, it has, it looks like a green LED and that'll be on, I'm sure, just when it's reading. I don't know if it'll act like a hard drive light or not, but uh, it doesn't matter because my main concern that it wasn't going to be on all the time. USB, CF, I think it said 41. 41 and 1 or something like that. Sorry, this is, goes in the 3.5 inch bay. My apologies. It's, it's got a, just a huge list of, of uh, cards that it can read. I don't need all of those things. I'm a photographer on the side, so I need a CF card reader, compact flash, and, and that'll just be fine for me. Um, so the, the unusual part of this PC is this will be my main way of installing programs um, will be on USBs and cards, not on optical drives because I actually didn't buy an optical drive. It's not because they were too expensive, it's just because I didn't want one. Uh, I think it's kind of an older technology and, and I'm kind of ready to move on from them. The way I'll be installing my operating system, which will be Windows 7, is putting it on a USB flash drive and then installing it from there. It's kind of impractical, but it's one of the only things that I'll need to do like that. Every other program is pretty much downloadable online, so no reason to really have an optical bay nowadays, uh, especially with iPhones and me uh, media players like that. You don't need to burn CDs. I haven't burned a CD in quite a while. So the next thing we're moving on to is the Roswell Wi-Fi uh, PCI Express card. Um, the reason why I got this is because my motherboard does not have uh, Wi-Fi on it. So drivers may need to install these even though you wouldn't for another thing because uh, you might not have internet. You'd have to go LAN. It's not an option in this room. So. so you might have to install these and then update them from the website. It's one of the exceptions to the rule. This is a pretty unexciting card or thing for most people. Basic, no frills, got good reviews. I think it was $16 or something like that. Pretty cheap. Oh, I have all the price lists here. Let's see. This was... This was... Free! I have no idea. So I'm gonna call it $16. It's got some uh, IO shield and the antennas. Nothing exciting in there, just Wi-Fi card. I decided to not go with the USB just because it would take up one of my USBs and honestly that one's probably, USBs are probably going to be more useful than the PCI Express card slot because I don't, I only have one thing going in and it's my graphics card. So this is uh, definitely a big item. This is the CPU. It's a AMD FX 4170. That's a 4.2 gigahertz uh, processor with 4.3 gigahertz turbo. It's supposed to be easy to overclock, which I don't foresee myself doing for a while, uh, but very exciting for me, especially because I think the highest um, clock speed I've ever had is 2.3 or something on my MacBook Pro, which was really hot stuff six years ago. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, 12 megabytes of total cache. Okay, I want to be careful with this one here. All right, so looks like we've got some uh, please read this first information. Uh, AMD processor inside you'll find a lot of transistors is what it's trying to tell me. And here is the stock heat sink, which is what I will be using to cool my CPU. I've heard that the stock heat sink is very nice compared to other CPU coolers. Um, AMD has opted to actually give you some copper to, or copper um, heat pipes, which is unusual for just totally touch the thermal compound, like a noob. Well, I guess that's what this was for, but it fell off. So hopefully, let everybody get a nice, good close-up of my fingerprint on there. Really pro-level computer building right now. So we'll, we'll uh, see how that goes, because I'm not going to reapply the thermal paste. I think it'll be fine. Hopefully it is. If 
it's not totally my fault. Standard um, AMD locking mechanism. A nice holographic logo. Uh, man, I'm really sour about touching that. Oh well. Here's a case badge, FX AMD. I'm undecided whether I'll be putting badges on my case. We'll see. Just how I feel. And uh, I guess there's really no reason to get this. I'll do it for you guys. Why not? Why not? So here's the CPU. I'm going to be very careful not to touch the bottom because I know it's a very crucial part of this whole deal. So it looks like all the pins are fine from this angle and this angle. Yeah. So AMD. Um, made in Malaysia. There you go. Just in case you were wondering. All right. Put that on there. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with these components as they're really some of the most expensive ones. Or I'm just going to totally blow it off because I can't figure out how to put it back in the box. All right. Good. We are on our way. Got a couple more items here. I'm going to try not to spread out my stuff too much. All right. Windows 7, I'm not going to open it because you guys will steal my CD key, even if I install it after I post this video. You guys are clever, I know. I know the internet. A bunch of clever people out there. Let's get to another star here. This is my motherboard. I'm sure a lot of you have wondered which one I've chosen. It's going to be the M5A97 Evo. This is an AM3 Plus motherboard, which is also what the FX4170 is. So let's go ahead and not mess this up. SATA, connect, SATA cables, uh, these are nice. They've got the shielding for the ground on the top. Look like really quality cables. Um, this one does as well. Here's uh, something unique to ASUS. Uh, they've included sort of like a breakout pin for all of your um, Elite your hard drive light and reset button so you you can easily put the the cables onto this and then put it into the motherboard. Really nice feature by ASUS. IO shield. I actually had plans to paint that black because I thought it was going to be uh, just steel colored or silver, but it doesn't look like I'll be painting that. That's really nice. I'm really excited about that. It was a good surprise. Not blue, but I'll take it. Some uh, uh, drivers for the motherboard. Um, again, don't, don't, don't install those. Get the latest online. And a case sticker powered by ASUS. So that's cool. All right, let's go ahead and open up this M5A97 motherboard by ASUS. This was a sort of cheap motherboard, but for the price, it really came with a lot of features that I wanted. So, I'm going to try and not touch anything I'm not supposed to, which is probably all of it. Uh, all right, so we have the AM3 Plus, so AM3 Plus socket. Uh, here we've got four DIMMs of, for RAM. Uh, I'm only going to be using two of those for now. I might upgrade later. You've got a PCI Express X16 and a PCI Express X4, I believe. Um, four SATA connectors there, 24 pin, 8 pin power. And you've got this, uh, these were the uh, headers go for the uh, hard drive light, the restart light, the on button, and some of your front USB connectors. Okay, go ahead and flip this around, trying to touch just the outside. I don't know if that's important or not. So the I.O. on this is going to be um, one of these old ports that we're not going to use. Um, uh, digital audio, I think it's got six USB 2's, which is two, four, six. Two USB 3's, IEEE I think it's called, gigabit, and six audio connectors. So that should be all I need. Um, I don't need a whole lot of USB 3's. I'm actually more into SATA, which I didn't mention. There's two SATAs on this board, uh, which is really nice for me because I'm more into transfer speed since I do a lot of video editing, big files. 
Uh, so that's that's why I opted for that. I guess we'll leave this out and uh, go ahead and put this on my bed over here. It's getting kind of cluttered. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit like hot in here after doing all this. Uh, never really done an unboxing before, as you can probably tell. Trusty tool. The next thing is going to be the fan controller. I've heard really bad reviews about this, but I think I'm going to install it anyway. This is the Century 2. It's a touchscreen fan controller. It can control up to five fans. Uh, one of the complaints is that it can only go 0 to 40% and then 40% to 100% by 10% increments. Um, it has an annoying beep that you can turn off with this button here. And I don't know what this R does, but we'll find out later in the build. Some of the complaints about this, uh, there's actually two reviews on Newegg that say that this has shorted out to their case and made their unit catch on fire. So that's a pretty exciting review. Um, and I bought it anyway. Must really love fire. So some information that we won't need probably. Um, got temperature probes. I think there's five of them in there. Uh, thermal tape that I've heard is complete garbage. So we'll see what to do about that. Here's the unit itself. So it's actually mounted like this. Um, it's a touchscreen device. Uh, it's a resistive touch, not capacitive. So it's so it's not as nice as as say like an iPhone or um, the newer smartphone screen, which are capacitive. You'll be able to feel a little give in the screen. It's just cheaper technology, and that's what keeps the price down. Five fan connectors. There's a couple PWM fan connectors. Um, Molex power. So just your standard ports here, and these are your thermal or your uh, temperature probes. Uh, one of the I've been trying to find reviews of this, and uh, I'll show all the pins up close because that's been some of the complaints is that there's no clear showing of the pins. We've got five Molexes, five PWM Molexes or whatever you call them. I think they are. Power is a Molex and then it's got a through so that you can power other things as well. So thermal probes and just the back of the, the unit itself. Um, so pause the video if you want to see that. Sorry if I said that too late, but you can always go back in time in YouTube. Okay. Under the table time. All right. So we're down to, I believe, the last item here. Yep. Last item, and that's going to be the keyboard. I decided to go with the Logitech Gaming Keyboard. It's a G110. There's only one reason why I really went with this. Um, well, two, I guess. Well, there's probably a lot of them, but two main reasons. Of course, um, this is going to be used for gaming and sort of some photo editing, uh, movie editing. And I wanted to go with a mechanical keyboard, but I couldn't really justify the cost based upon I've never used a mechanical keyboard. So, in the future I might upgrade, but one of the main features I got this keyboard f was for the backlighting, which is nice because uh, you want to have the lights turned out when you're editing photos for good uh, color. Um, the ability to see exactly what color things are. Uh, so that's nice to be able to see the keys you're using. Also, this is one of the only ones that has a headphone jack and um, a microphone jack on the keyboard, which is nice because the headphone cables are only so long nowadays and, and uh, I'd rather have it plugged into the keyboard and not running all the way down to wherever my computer may be. So that's sort of the main reasons I got this. Um, I don't know what mechanicals are like. They were a little bit more expensive and they did not have the headphone jack. I realized some mechanicals did have the headphone jack and um, you know they were obviously much more expensive. Nobody can argue with me for that. So this is what I got and I think it's going to be just fine for what I need. Uh, this does have super glue in the case. This standard, there we go. This does have 12 programmable macro buttons, which could be very useful for me. Uh, 
like I said before, for photo and video editing. Uh, so here is the Logitech G110. It is a wired keyboard. It has a cover over the USB, which is a nice touch, I suppose. Uh, some other nice features about this is that you have a volume knob here, some audio playback buttons, mute. Uh, here are your 12 programmable macro buttons, a gamer switch, which disables the ability to get to the desktop. That way, if you're playing a game um, and you hit the Windows key and tab somehow at the same time, it won't allow it to go back to the desktop. So that can relieve some frustration. Uh, I don't know what these M1 through M3 keys are. I believe that's something like a what a calculator would use. You do a quick macro and memorize it. Uh, brightness and the headset and mic mute buttons. So seems quality. I can't tell. Let's see if this. I can't tell. I can't tell if this has a third click. I think it does though. So I think this volume knob has a third click. I don't know what that would do. We'll see. Um, it off to the side, see what else comes with it. I'm sure we'll have something that we don't need, like drivers and instructions, destructions. Um, we'd love to get your feedback on this product. All of these products will be reviewed by me on Newegg. And then we have a wrist rest, which, come on, let's be honest, who really uses these things? I sure don't. But it is available to those who need rest for their wrists. I think I broke it. That's okay, because I'm not going to use it. All right. So that is it for this part of the video. I will be shooting the next part of the video, which will be me putting together all of these components. Um, I'm sure there will be some time lapsing and um, things like that to speed up my uh, bumbling and, and not knowing where connectors go. Hopefully it won't be that much. Hopefully it'll just be a good 15 minutes of me knowing what I'm doing. We'll see how that goes. Thank you guys for watching. Um, post your comments in the video, in the comment section below. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to reply to them. And one more thing before we go. I'm gonna find out for everybody. Here's my copy of Dirt 3. Did I show you guys the code? I hope I didn't. Okay, there's one copy. And then my graphics card is here. Let's see, let's see. All right, so I have two copies of Dirt 3, which is awesome. I want one of them, but I'm definitely gonna give one away. Uh, and the way that I'll do it is leave a comment about, first you have to like this video, okay? I've always wanted to do that. First you have to like the video. And then you can subscribe if you want. But leave a comment about what the one feature of my computer is that you would have done differently. And uh, I'd, I'd like you to stay away from the Intel versus AMD business, but if that is your preference, then you know, go ahead and start that flame war. Uh, maybe something about the hard drives, the optical bay, you think I'm wrong. Something like that. Maybe even my keyboard. That's probably gonna be the one. But anyway, that would probably be the one for me. So if you want this uh, CD code, I will be happy to give it to you. I'll award it um, a week after I post this video. And if I pick your comments, I'll be sure to um, put you, I'll PM you and with the code and, and I'll try to do a shout out on part three of this series, which is going to be the installation of all my software and what I've chosen to put on the computer. So go ahead and leave me a comment below what you would change about this system and you will win a Dirt 3 CD code. Well, that wraps it up for this unboxing. It's been a lot of fun for me. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and seeing what I've got. This has been a long time coming for me. I've had to save up and make sure that I've got enough, but almost squeaked it in under a thousand, but I was $10 short. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in part two, which will be the assembly video.